Turning now to your community focus from this potential sale of two local hospitals to issues over the release of undocumented immigrants. There is always plenty of ground to cover with Attorney General Peter Narona. He is here now. Thanks for being here. Sure, Kim. Good to be with you. So before we get to the issues that I just mentioned, I just want to ask you briefly to put back on your former U.S. attorney hat. We mm -hmm. reported on this trove of documents that the Rhode Island DOT has now handed over to the yep. Department of Justice as they do their probe into the Washington Bridge breakdown. Talk to us, if you can, about what happens from here now that the DOJ has those documents in hand. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I don't, I haven't spoken to them about specifically what they're doing, but this is what I would do if I were working the case as an AUSA or, or leading a U.S. attorney is you get the documents, and what they've said they're looking for are false claims submitted to the federal government, government for payment. So they're going to want to know, well, who submitted claims for payment, and then to see whether or not what they charged for was in fact delivered uh, because the federal government was paying for it. And then from there you would question witnesses based on the documents. So you want your documents before you question witnesses yeah. you know, in sort of depositions in that, uh, in that uh, context um, because you want to confront them with documents or see what they have to say about things they've represented to the federal government. And how much time? I know we always talk about how it's oh. hard to tell time with these yeah. types of things. This is going to take a Long while, time. I imagine. I mean, particularly in the federal system, uh, it, everything is very thorough, mm. as it should be. Uh, but things take time. You know, a lot of it is managing your documents, getting them all to a place where you can readily access them mm -hmm. and, and uh, search for terms. Everything's electronic now, mm. so you put everything in a database, you'll come up with search terms that, you, that you're looking for, and then just to line up uh, interviews takes a long time mm. in terms of getting representation for those witnesses. So I, I would expect uh, really not a matter of months, but a matter of years. Mm. Um, switching gears now, turning yeah. to something that happened just last night. There was a public forum, a public hearing on the proposed sale of two local hospitals. We're talking about Fatima and Roger Williams from Prospect Charter Care to Centurion. Ultimately, it's something that your office has to sign off on. And mm -hmm. we know uh, you were there last night. I was. And I know there's still a long way to go in this process, but at this point, do you think this sale would be a good thing for the people of Rhode Island? Well, what we're dealing with are two distressed hospitals, frankly, mm -hmm. and they're distressed because their current owner has put them in that position. A lot of great men and women work out there and deliver great patient care. They're incredibly important to our healthcare system here, but their owner doesn't care about healthcare, and so we are faced with a prospect between, no pun intended, mm -hmm. between the current owner maintaining ownership for how, however long a period of time and a new owner about which we still have questions, which is why we're going through the process. So I can't tell you, Kim, as I stand here right now, whether it's good or, or not for it out, but I know we're in a difficult position because we have an owner that doesn't care about them, but we also have to make sure that the prospective new owner is someone who will deliver healthcare the way Rhode Islanders uh, expect it to be delivered. So that's a process and we're going through it right now. Uh, there have been multiple instances recently where federal immigration authorities have admonished the state, yeah. quite frankly, for releasing alleged criminals despite them having ICE detainers. Yeah. There's been a lot of finger pointing here about who's responsible, so let's try to cut to the chase. Sure. Is there a law in place in Rhode Island that's sort of tying the state's hands that makes officials unable to detain these alleged criminals? Well. Uh, the devil is in the details. There are three ways that someone who might uh, be in the country illegally can be detained lawfully. Mm. If there's a warrant for them issued by an Article Three federal judge, the kind of judge you uh, take judges McConnell Smith mm -hmm. and McElroy here in the state of Rhode Island. So that's a criminal warrant. There is an order of deportation signed by an immigration judge. Those things, uh, those two things will allow you to detain someone in the country unlawfully, uh, indefinitely, until mm. that federal process takes place. What's problematic are these federal detainers, mm. where a agent, an ICE agent, uh, 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 delivers a detainer based on what they think uh, should be sufficient for the person to be held in the country, to be held, excuse me, held by the state officials indefinitely. And so the problem with that is if it's not based on probable cause, the state could be sued. Mm -hmm. And so as a practical matter, what it comes down to is this. If it's an order of deportation from an immigration court or a criminal warrant issued by a federal court, the state can hold them. If they can't, um, they put themselves in je we put ourselves in jeopardy mm -hmm. because we could be sued after it. So that's really parsing all that, figuring out which situation you're in is a matter for the ACI 
and the sheriff's department in the end. And so just briefly, do you think in these most recent cases, anyone did anything that they shouldn't have? Well, I don't have all the facts, Kim, because mm -hmm. they're not my agencies, as I pointed out before, but it's, it's pretty simple. If there's an order of deportation, and there's a and or there's a federal court uh, criminal warrant they can be detained indefinitely if you're doing it if you're holding them just on an agent's detainer without a specific finding of probable cause by a judge you're really putting yourself in jeopardy as the state uh, for doing something uh, without probable cause. And we're almost out of time, but last time you were here, we were talking about the ongoing ILO investigation. Yeah. You said you were waiting to talk to a couple of people. Have you been able to have those conversations? Well, the process is complete. You know, whether witnesses will agree to a, to a conversation with us is up to them, but the process is complete. It's a matter now of uh, documenting uh, what we found um, and making the legal determinations we have to make, and I hope to finish that up fairly soon. All right, Attorney General Peter Narona, thank you as always for being here on 12 News at 4. Thanks, Kim. Good to be with you.